Hello guys, welcome to the second part of uh, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. In this part we will be exploring the Hogwarts grounds and finding out all the perils that lurk. This is Hagrid. Uh, looks a bit odd. Sort of, uh, that sort of... I don't know what you call him, man. Like sort of blob, almost. His uh, arms and head appear to sort of be of the same kind of shape, sort of cone type shape. It's kind of weird. Uh, but now we go to the second class. Herbology. Not in the greenhouse for some reason, but just inside uh, this uh, sort of regular looking door. And now you have to... Um By the way, I'm recording this uh, after I've actually played the through this, which is not how I recorded the first part. So, uh, I don't actually know what I'm about to do here. I've, it's given me the opportunity to read out uh, loading screens and um, any sort of epic fails that have occurred. Yeah, house points are moving, moving large blocks for some reason here. Now we're collecting blue beans, which uh, is always nice and fun and cool. I kind of like the way you, you can collect blue beans even before you've met Fred and George in this sort of part of the game. This is a pretty easy uh, way to get to class. Just the pen doing a few blocks. Professor Sprout looking nothing like Professor Sprout. But uh, this was before she actually appeared in any of the films, mind, so uh, I guess that's kind of forgivable. I don't know why they're teaching Incendio in Herbology, though. Shouldn't that be teached in, like, charms? Once again, you're learning as well in exactly the same way you learned the first one, and also the way you will be learning uh, the other two spells in this game. I have a primitive way of just learning the spell. As and when it comes to actually casting the spell, it's a sort of automatic thing. Most impressive. Now try this one. That was good. This is boring. This is without doubt one of the most Excellent. boring parts of the game. I assure you, the game's okay. sort of excitement does start to pick up a little bit uh, in this next bit, though. Well once you finish this lesson. The incendio spell. Now follow me to learn how to use the incendio spell. Learning the spell is actually pretty easy, but uh, casting the spell is a little more difficult. I actually had a lot of difficulty in this in recording this footage. Actually, uh, recording, uh, being able to cast the spell. Hit the correct symbols, and you'll build up enough spell power to affect the bulb. Casting incendio here um, causes the bulb to shrink for some reason. I'm going around collecting chocolate frogs here, even though I don't need them. Uh, and then I go back and talk to Professor Sprout, which is kind of pointless because she's saying exactly the same thing she said before. Why did I go and speak to Professor Sprout? I have no idea. That makes absolutely no sense. But yeah, uh, casting incendio is actually kind of difficult. I think I managed to do it all right this time. Yep. Oh no, we didn't we miss that one there. Yes! Ha ha! I get five points just for that. All that, and I only get five points. That's the most rubbish thing ever. And then the door lock behind you. That's, that's quite a sort of theme of this game. <laughs> you're, you're going through doors and then they lock behind you with these massive great padlocks. Yeah, well, you'll be pretty good on a broomstick in a minute. That guy just stands outside the Quidditch training light throughout the entire game. That's kind of boring. Notice she's saying welcome back to me and because I actually recorded this later because the first attempt was completely rubbish because I didn't realise it at the time, but uh, I'd actually got the controls completely backwards, so it was up to go up and down to go down, which sounds like common sense, but actually in flying games, it's better off if it's the other way around and it's down to go up and up to go down. It's like sort of the standard in all flying games. And for some reason the controls in this were backwards, so I had to change the settings. And now the controls are better, and uh, I'm just the absolute master of this. 
But why? Like, with I think like one exception throughout this entire game, are all the flying levels nothing more than flying through rings? I mean, this could have been a really exciting part of the game. This could have been really fun. You could have like shot, shot things at your enemies or uh, something. I don't know. But instead, all you do is fly through rings. You get gold wings, even though those wings aren't actually gold. Time for your second seeker training lesson. You seem to have the hang of chasing the snitch. This is uh, this is just 20 rings this time, except that you actually have to catch the snitch at the end as well, which is pretty damn easy. Yeah, I actually managed to get silver wings on the backwards controls. How impressive is that? Am I just not so brilliant? It's amazing. No, I'm not really, am I? I'm actually not that good uh, this time around. This actually took. Uh, Two or three goes to get the uh, gold things. Like, when do you ever see this in the book or the film? The snitch, like, producing like these sort of fireworks behind it for you to fly through. There is a better flying level later on in this part, though. Right now, this is kind of boring. It's like Superman 64, actually. It's like the first like five levels in that is just flying through rings. But there it's like a ring every like two inches or something, right? Whereas here at least the rings are sort of fairly sparse and you don't have to go through all of them. Nice little cutscene here before you have to catch the snitch. And then catching the snitch itself is actually pretty easy. More gold wings. Would you like Once again, again, they're not actually gold. Match, team the and then we have the real challenge. We have to race against someone else, which actually doesn't create much of a hazard, really. You just have to go through more rings. Who is that? I want to know who that is. You currently have bronze wings in this section. Would you like to try it again? Okay. Three, two, one. It was actually really annoying when I was doing this with backwards controls. Because uh, once you enter the Quidditch training, you have to complete all three stages before you're allowed to leave. So I was there for like a good like half hour or maybe an hour or something, trying desperately to do these levels like in the most rubbish way possible. Really annoying. It wasn't until after I'd finished that I actually realised I had the controls backwards. It is kind of weird how, you know, going, pressing up to go down and down to go up actually does seem like a more fluid way to play the game. You'd think just the common sense control move, up to go up and down to go down, would uh, would make it a lot easier. But no, backwards controls. Another way to go, it seems. I have no idea why, but that's just always been the way in flying games. Ooh, four rings to go. I think I've noticed actually I've missed quite a few rings here, but I actually still managed to get gold wings on this bit. Ooh, I missed another one there. I only just got that one. Same cutscene once again before catching the snitch. Excellent. For that I wonder what happens if you miss the snitch. I've like never done that because it's so easy. Would you like to try it again? No. I've got gold wings. Why would I want to try it again? Yeah. Well, I'm never going to go back there again because I've got gold wings on all of them now. I think you can actually go back in there and she'll say. Uh, hello, would you like to try this challenge? Oh, you've got gold wings on already, so never mind. Uh, how about this challenge? Oh, you've got gold wings on that as well, never mind. Would you like to try this challenge? Oh, you've got gold wings on that as well, never mind. And then you leave. They never say anything about how many every flavour beans they want. You have to consult the, um, the pause menu for that. But they want, uh, 70, I think. Very dark down 
Well, yeah, it's a well. Well, duh! Just down the bottom of the well, so if you can find the bottom of the well, you'll find her. That actually doesn't become sort of relevant uh, until much later. Ron just making a sort of brief cameo here before clearing off. Um, and it's not very clear actually uh, what these bushes or what this puffscade here is here for, but uh, if you get him to eat the bush, which doesn't look particularly nutritious to be honest, it looks just, just like brambles or dead branches or something. But, uh, puffscade seems to like it. But anyway, he for some reason produces blue heavy flavour beans for you to collect. This is uh, a bit tedious, really, because it takes him so long to eat the whole thing. Uh, and there's another one over here. I think there's a third um, over on the other side. Uh, it's not just a simple matter of walking over there, you actually have to get him to follow you. So it's very tedious! Come on, you stupid thing, I haven't got all day. Oh, and they hurt you as well. That's the other annoying thing. Well, there's a frog over there, I could probably get that. Like I said before, I'm not actually playing the game at this particular point, so uh, I may have gone over to get that frog, I can't quite remember. The only th editing I, uh, I think I've done for this, actually, is just cutting out the loading screens. I like the way he eats it, it just sort of dissolves into the ground. And even though this is supposed to be like the Hogwarts grounds, you like confined to very sort of strict areas by these solid walls of trees. Oh, this mini game's quite fun. You've got to collect uh, more of the beans. They don't count towards your inventory of every the beans. They're just for this mini game. You just got to collect them all and avoid being bumped. They don't actually hurt you. You just lose some beans. Yeah, doing really rubbish here. It is actually pretty crucial to avoid being hit, actually, because the means do sort of scatter around quite a, quite a way away. I kind of wish they'd made that a bit more challenging, because that is actually kind of fun, that game. But the problem is, it's so easy. Get a wizard card though, which is always fun. Derwent Shimpley. Yeah, Derwent Shimpley to you as well. Let's have a look at him. Ugh. Shimpley. Looks weird. To present, ate an entire venomous tentacular for a bet and survived. Though he's still purple. Are you having a little giggle at the fact that he's purple? Purple rain, purple... no. That's a really feeble connection, that. What are Puffscape mentioned in the book? I'm trying to think. I'm sure they are. I certainly don't recall ever seeing them in the films. Come on, you stupid thingy, that bush. No, it doesn't look particularly nutritious, but if you eat it, you can get me some beans, can't you? And I'm selfish like that. I, I have... I'm just looking towards my own priorities of collecting every fill of beans. I'm not at all interested in your health. It's funny, isn't it? You see a few sort of magical creatures around in these sort of Hogwarts grounds here and there, but uh, not many enemies. What are these sort of dark sort of alleyways that you walk down in the middle of Hogwarts grounds? They're sort of cheating here at the game designers. They're pretending that it's another sort of indoor area with all the doors and the, the walls that they're confining you to. 
yeah, Hagrid needs to get you the fire seeds because God forbid he has to go and get them. Just put a you know a first year student life at risk. He needs to go and get fire seeds. It's far too risky for one of the teachers or the gamekeepers or whatever you how you want to call him. Just one quick heavy flavor bean to collect there, and another one over here. And some more down here, and this is actually where the portrait is. So we're gonna go in here first. Hello, Harry. Oh another uh another one where you collect the um bouncing bowl every clever beans type thing. The second one of three that you find in the game. How did I survive that? One just went sort of through me there. I like the music they have for this bit. I do not understand why during the sort of main gameplay when you're just walking around Hogwarts or the Hogwarts grounds, there's no music and then other parts of the game do have music because the music in this is actually quite good. Why don't they use it more? Well done, Harry. You collected all the Bertie Pots beans. You learned a famous witches and wizards card for your troubles. Another famous witches and wizards card. You can never have too many of that. Newt, I like that name. Is he holding a carrot? To present. Celebrated author of fantastic beasts and where to find them. I think that's all right actually. I think it actually says on oh, Fantastic Beats where to buy them. By Newt Skinander. I could be wrong though. So here's the portrait. Hello, you're a Gryffindor student, aren't you? Nice to see you. My god, how on earth did you know that? You must have psychic powers. Ooh, no shit. Will you, you open your legs, will you? <laughs> I'll open up for you. Ooh, steady on, we've only just met. I'm not trying to part your legs here. I'm not trying to open you up. I'm not trying to open you up and show your class. Oh dear, that's a really desperate reference there. Who's that running past? You don't actually see many other students wandering around Hogwarts, but uh, there was one. Uh, now let's have a look in here. Oh, I thought that was going to be another Bessie Potts bit. But uh, no, it's just some area with some giggling fireflies, I think. Oh, Bessie Potts card up at the top there. Hit it! It just drops down, bounces around for a bit. And become slightly smaller in size. Oh, stop laughing. What the hell's so funny? What have we got? Hengist of Woodcroft, medieval, dates unknown, driven away from his home by muggle persecutors. Hengist is supposed to have settled in Scotland. This is where he found the village of Hogsmeade. A three point Why are they talking about the village of Hogsmeade in the first book or the first game? I'm not supposed to know about that until the third one. Six I've got now. Still quite a few to get. Anyway, let's head back out. Uh, oh, there's another one here. Let's go in and see what it is. Ooh, more dirty bot beans. We have that one. That one, that one, and that appears to be it. This is some on this side now. That's your lot. Let's go through the door and back out. Alright, we've delayed it for long enough. Let's go for the sort of miniature boss battle that lies ahead. Emperor Palpatine, once again, is going to summon him. Alright, man, you've had it. He's brought a gargoyle to life. This looks like some sort of wild boar type thing. Could be a very interesting life being a gargoyle. All you do is sit around all day. What's 
is actually uh, one of the difficult bits, actually, because he, he does do quite a lot of damage if he hits you, and he's sometimes kind of difficult to avoid. Luckily, you say targeted on him the whole time, just automatically, so... Obviously, you just keep your distance and keep firing. It's not too difficult. Like many boss battles, once you know what you're doing. It's interesting, it was the sort of back of the courtyard area, and now suddenly we're next to the door. Oh, you've got to levitate him back up to where he was. And for some reason he comes back to life. Except when you put him back on the pedestal, he becomes sort of a statue again. I don't know. But anyway, you get some beads for your troubles. More importantly, the door unlocks. And now, uh, we have a book, uh, which is to save your game. Uh, but we're not interested in that at the moment. Jump over this uh, little pit of lava. Head up here. Head up another one. Harry's there is strong. He can climb all the way up there. That must have been like uh, almost twice his height, that ledge. Got some more puff skates just bouncing around. Minding their own business. Sort of cartoony way that that one's asleep with the Z's or Z's. Get me out of its head. It's kind of a nice cutscene you've got there. You see the little air vent? Or whatever you want to call it. We've got to put a pus get a puff gate to put its arse in, in it. Yeah, I don't know why I'm firing at him. He ain't done anything to me. But, you know, the guy who's just been attacking him, he decides to follow for some reason. I shall never understand the logic of these puff skates. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but anyway. Get him to follow you down here. Ooh, do a little jump on that. Conveniently puts his ass in there. And... Ooh, that looks a bit weird. Sort of dancing around in there. And there's another sort of forest bit up here. What we need now is a real tough enemy to fight. But I'll put this in our place. Just chop down this massive tree, I wonder. It wasn't doing that many harm, was it? is that I have to collect every single bean, even though it really isn't that important. Can I get both at the same time? Yes, I can! Ha-ha! Now I can go on to bigger and better things. Well, this is kind of scary, this. You've got to get them to eat these bushes, which, unlike the ones before, do not hurt you. But just watch what happens here. This is a little bit scary, I think. Yeah. You sort of notice he's a little bit bigger now. And then he comes over. And he's this one. And oh my god, he's a monster! That is actually kind of frightening. How big he is. Anyway, he fits in that vent now, so... Uh, we can head up over here, but the door's locked. I am now realising my mistake. I'm realising that I uh, need to uh, find another puff skate and I need to get him to go into another event. Uh, that will allow me access to the ledge which enables me to unlock the door. And uh, I think this is actually another mistake that I'm making here. Getting him to eat these bushes. So you can be subjected to this rather frightening image once again of this giant puff skate. We come over here and. Oh, it's only a tiny little vent. Not to worry though, there is actually a way to make him smaller. You 
just have to flip head to it a few times. What kind of logic does that follow? Yeah. I bet a lot of women wish it was like that in real life. What's the best way to lose weight? I know, flipendo you. I can flipendo you. I found all these kind of weight loss adverts kind of stupid. I mean, they talk about how you can lose 10 pounds in a month. Well, I can lose 10 pounds in like a second. I just have to drop a 10 pound note on the ground. It's easy. I don't know why I'd want to lose 10 pounds. 10 pounds is quite useful. You can buy things with it. Use lever. More precisely, pull lever. I always think it looks like he's broken it the way that he just flops down on the ground. And now we can go over to the one with the uh, giant puff skate. Open the door. And how's this for health and safety at a school? This giant river of lava. Yeah. This is something that uh, Hagrid understandably wasn't prepared to do, but he was prepared to just send this first year student off to do. Travel over this perilous river of lava. That for some reason they have in a school for children. Quite young children as well. Where's this lava going? It just sort of goes underneath that island at the end. That's the fire seeds on it. So where's it going? A very long look at the fire seeds we got there. But anyway, back to business. Jump on these platforms which uh, rather uh, unhelpfully wobble about whenever you land on them. And you can see that he doesn't actually land in the river of love when he falls off. He just sort of walks about on top of it. He's like, Jesus Christ, he he can walk on, well, not water, but lava. That's kind of stupid. Because <laughs> there are actually bits later in the game where you actually do fall into the water or whatever the hell it is, liquid of some kind. I don't stay on these platforms long enough to realise what actually happens to them if you stay on them too long. But you always hear them explode in the background after you've landed on them. So I don't know what's going on there. And thankfully, uh, these are permanent platforms you've got now. So you just have to jump from one to another. Game designers obviously realise you might suffer a bit of damage to your health. Also emotionally and physically. After travelling over a river of lava, so they leave your always and wild potion there to replenish your health. In hindsight, I probably should have waited until I was coming back the other way. Because that happened. And I had real trouble with this incendio spell. I don't know what, what it was, but it just would not respond. I was pressing it at the right time, but... Uh, it wasn't having it. Come on, you stupid thing. Get it. Get it. Get it! I think we get it this time. Well, hey, there we go. That took me uh, quite a few goes, that. I don't know why, because incendio is pretty easy. There's the fire seeds. Now we just have to get back to Hagrid. Go for it, Harry. You know you want to. We're going against the current now. That might make things more difficult. Where's that jar in like the, the uh, top right hand corner come from? It wasn't in a jar, it was just on its own. Anyway, a little bit easier this time because uh, I'm not worried about collecting Bertie Bot's beans. Looting islands. Oh, missed that one. It's kind of weird how little damage it actually does to you when you step in lava. That should be instant death, that. Uh, 
and now we've got to trudge all the way back to Hagrid. I mean, there's nothing to do around here. You think maybe the game designers would think of maybe inserting some new challenge on your way back that was, you know, released once you got the fire seeds or something, but uh, no. There's nothing anyway on your way back. Oh yeah, this is interesting. There's like this platform that you can't get to with Puff's Gate bouncing around on top of it. I mean, for all I know, there might be a way to get up there. I certainly don't know what it is. I think I'm actually sort of trying to see if there is a way up there. At this particular point here. Nope. Can't see one. Nevertheless, let's return to Hagrid. Come on, me. Return to Hagrid. Stop messing about. By the way, Harry's carrying his wand the whole time during the game. Does he not have anywhere to put it? Does he not have pockets? Careful you don't step in the lava! Ooh, that was close. It's only been a minute or so since I drank the last potion, now I need this one. Not really drinking it though, but just picking up a bottle of frozen red liquid which somehow replenishes all your health. Like, they could have brought back the gargoyle for another fight at this point here, but nope. You're just trudging back through empty rooms, basically. And now, what are we doing? Hmm, don't know what that was about. I've gone the wrong way. What am I doing? I've gone the wrong way. It's this way. Yes, there we go. That was kind of stupid of me. Well done, Harry. You found the fire seeds. Now yeah, no thanks you to you. For, it's our secret, mind you. Come on inside, Harry. Wipe your feet now. You wipe your Welcome feet. You're the one who spends most of his life outside. Room than your cupboard under the stairs, eh? I got this from a man in the Hogshead pub. It's a dragon egg. I need some fire seeds to give so it that last damn big dragon egg you've got there, Hagrid. Go ahead and put them in the hatch. Hatch. Sounds rather mean. You don't want to hatch before it's, you know, been properly, you know, fertilized or whatever you call it. It's hatching. Well, it's not really hatching, it just has hatched. <whistles> Looks kinda cute. Up you come, my beauty. He just put his hands in the fire. Ain't he lovely? I'll call him Norbert. He's a Norwegian rig. I guess he does look kinda nice. Harry, you're a true friend. I want you to have this book. Quidditch through the book ages. that's floating in midair. This book says absolutely no purpose. You just sort of have it for a brief period. We better give Norbert his first feed soon. I'll see you later, Harry. Thanks again. No thanks to you. I did all that for some dragon. Well, you also did it so that that gate behind you would open up. Just to open up another part of the game. Which is nice. Uh, okay, now where are we going? We're going off uh, to play Quidditch, I believe. Oh god, more of those laughing sort of bug type things. And the third and final Bertie Bots thing. Oh no! I stand corrected. Just uh, an area where you can collect more beans. We need another eleven. We want to satisfy Fred and George. Well, dead end at that side. Nowhere else to go. 
exit th back through this archway. I don't know what you're laughing at. Follow me, oh, Harry. Look, there's Ron. Guess what I found? Ron just keeps randomly showing up, doesn't he? Last time we saw him, he was talking about puff skates, and he head headed back to all Hogwarts. How's he got there? Now we have the third and final Bertie Box stage thing. Yeah, we sh you've told me that twice already, Nick. This one's actually probably the only really challenging one of the three. And this is kind of a fun mini game, so I kind of wish they'd stepped up the challenge a little bit. I'm doing really rubbish here. Normally I do a bit better than this. Ooh, we're nearly there. Yeah! That wasn't too bad in the end. Well done, Harry. You collected all the Bertie Botts beans. You've earned a famous witches and wizards card for your troubles. For your troubles. There may be trouble ahead. But while there's moonlight and love and romance. More than the fairy. Okay, enough of that. I don't actually know what that song is, I just sort of came into my head when he said More trouble. Than the fairy. Medieval. Dates unknown. How many of the these wizard cards are medieval dates unknown? Enemy of Merlin. You'll be the enemy of Merlin in a minute. If you're not careful, Harry. Although, given that Merlin's not real, I don't think you really need to worry about that. Off to the Quidditch pitch we are then. Which is locked. This is the entrance to the Quidditch pitch. But first years like us aren't allowed to play. Looks uh, a lot I like uh, the one from the film, so, doesn't it? But only if you are very, very good. Here comes yeah, Neville. and you're not very, very Squire good, himself. are you, Ron? Let's go and see what he wants. The Malfoy stole my remember of. He ran off onto the school grounds with it. And this is actually something that happens in the book, so that's cool. Please help me. Come on, I'll show you where he went. Where are they here? This is this bit uh, of the game actually uh, takes place in somewhere that doesn't actually appear anywhere else in the game. Like where are they? This is just like some completely unknown area. It's actually quite a nice, nice kind of area. A lot of interesting kind of scenery you have, and this is probably the only really decent flying stage in the entire game because rather than you just flying through rings. You've actually got to avoid projectiles, you go through quite a complex route, and you've got to fight Malfoy. They could have had, like, two or three of these kind of flying stages in the game. Instead of flying through rings, you could have had them do something like this. This would have been a lot more fun, I think. But no, this is the only one in the game where you're not flying through rings. And even the fighting Malfoy in this one's uh, kind of just simple, just simply pressing a button and it does it all automatically. This is quite a nice uh, a mountainous area they've got here. And these fallen trees. This is one of the more sort of artistic bits of the game really, the, the bit that you're flying around here. Malfoy. That'll teach you to throw a bludger at me. How many bludgers does he have? He's got like a sort of infinite supply. He's like Legolas in Lord of the Rings films. He never runs out. Yeah, so you don't actually get the remember all back. Malfoy just decides he doesn't want it anymore. Yeah, with violence, none, nonetheless. 
with violets, no less. Yes. See, kids, violence solves everything. It's a bloody big remember ball he's got there. There are plants there that eat toads. Plants there that eat you as well. Mr. Potter, I am Professor McGonagall, deputy headmistress of Hogwarts and head of Gryffindor House. Really, oh, I, I did not know that. What you're chasing Malfoy about? I'll admit you have remarkable talent on a broomstick. Ordinarily, first-year students may not compete in Quidditch. In your no. case, we might overlook that rule. Oh, really? Well, don't even bother to ask whether or not I want to play Quidditch. Is about to start. Well, so I fly around her broom a bit, and now suddenly I'm in the team. Wow! You're going to play Quidditch? And not only that, we're about to start a game. So, do they not have a seeker, like, minutes before the game or something, and just by pure luck, Harry happens to show up and be quite good on a broom? As soon as I heard, I rushed down from my hut to give you a big congratulations. I know you'll catch what is Hagrid doing with his I mouth there? It. He looks like he's sort of whistling or something. No, the animation on Hagrid is very old in this. And this appears to be in this Quidditch stadium looks to be in a completely wide open field, which is nothing like what we just saw in the previous scene. I'll knock you off your broomstick in a minute. Okay, I'll stop saying that now, I'm stupid. So you don't actually f try to f find the snitch in this, uh... The snitch is like in plain sight throughout the entire thing. It's actually impossible to lose. I actually tried one time to lose just to see what happened and... Well no, you, you just carry on playing until you fly through all the rings. You can get knocked down by the bludgers. Be just restart. A glint of gold. Is that the snitch? Potter's seen the snitch. This would be a cool, for like a two-player type thing. Yeah. You don't actually play Quidditch at all. You just fly through rings. So this was a real missed opportunity, I think, in this game. There's sort of three stages to flying through the rings here. First stage, you're just normally flying through rings. Second stage, you're flying, racing against another seeker. And the third stage, you're just flying through rings. And then catching the snitch at the end. So they try to sort of pretend there are three stages to it, but there isn't really. I suppose maybe the other seek is supposed to be sort of an extra hazard or something, but he doesn't really get in your way or anything. And then after a short while, he decides to give up. And then there's a lot more rings on this last stage that you have to fly through. Come on, Harry, get through those rings so we can get this over with. Thankfully, we only have to do this uh, one other time during the game. What? No, I didn't. You're talking rubbishly, Jordan. No one knows what they're talking about in this game. And at last, now we can finish the game. Well done, Harry. My name's not Harry. Well, at least they're happy. That's a damn big snitch he's got there. Well now, if it isn't the notorious and Mr. The Quidditch Potter, stadium box the behind you. Mr. Potter, if There's no the way in this game of actually Mr. entering the Quidditch stadium at will. If, you, if you're not about to go into a Quidditch match, you were. Uh, it's actually locked because of the whole time. And you don't have this uh, Quidditch through the ages book for very long, actually. Now Snape takes it away from you. I'll just confiscate that. Thank you. 
So that book served no purpose whatsoever. Except as maybe as my it's made brain is recovered, we'll that start letter appear, perhaps? Lesson. Or map, or bit of paper, whatever it is. I think it's a map, isn't it? Hey, it's a piece of a map. Hold on. Yeah, a map. This is Fred and George's handiwork. The map shows there is a forgotten area around here. I wonder if it could be behind that forgotten? old door. Forgotten? How is it forgotten? The map Doesn't look much like a door, that. The door. Well, here goes. Alohomora. Kind of points little motion that Ron did there. It's not a door, Ron. It's like a sort of gate thing. Doesn't look very rusty either. Well, anyway, what have we got in here? Uh, I don't know. I don't want to say what I think that looks like. That uh, red thing is sticking out. Beware, Hagrid. I like that, just a sort of safety notice that's been signed by Hagrid. Oh, these things are kind of cool to fight. You've got to fight just sort of these you know, accomplices that it shoots out of its mouth. But you can doing them. And then once you've defeated them, you can cast an incendio on it to kill it. House points and some beans for that. Oh, we've nearly got enough beans now. We need three more. Um, any beans over here? No, just a lever. Well, levers are always good. Oh, Harry, you've broken another one. Oh, and you've broken that padlock as well. Well, that was clever of you, wasn't it? Go for it, Harry. You know you want to. And where am I going? Nope. There we go. That's the right way. Up. Up, 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 up. And... Oh, we've got a potion here. Let's drink it. Might as well. Very generous with the potions in the Hogwarts grounds. You actually don't find that many in sort of late stages of the game where you actually sort of do need them. Oh, these are fun. You can just throw them around and they like make sort of flowery things explode. In front of you. Pod patch. Good fun to throw around. Oh yeah, they are fun to throw around. Hagrid signed that one as well. It's kind of interesting. Bang! Yeah, I could do that all day. Wingardium Leviosa! Oh, yeah, and you actually use Wingardium Leviosa around here as well as Incendio. Which is kind of unusual for this game, but, you know, for you to use a spell that you don't actually learn in this area. Wingardium Leviosa! These things do hurt you, so uh, you've got to be a little bit careful, making sure you move them way out of the way. Wingardium Leviosa! And one more. Ow! I like the way they pop out. He squelches down on the ground. Wingardium nice sound effect. And the last one. Can't actually move them particularly far away. Ooh, still managed to get them all though. And now we can give them to Fred and George. Blueberry pie, my favourite. Thanks, Harry. The password for the grounds portrait. They keep nudging each other. I do not understand that. Watch out for Snape, Harry. He shows up when you least expect him. Well, he showed up in potions class, didn't he? And I actually kind of was expecting him there. That is indeed the correct password. I guess I'll have to open up for you now. Oh, I'd rather you didn't. We've only just met. Anyway, another wizard card in here. And guess who this one is? Come on, I'll give you.
you three guesses. Albus Dumbledore. Okay, time's up. And it is... Well, he said, didn't he? Albus Dumbledore. Albus Dumbledore. Currently headmaster at Hogwarts. Considered by many... And this is in the book as well. ...of modern times. Professor Dumbledore is particularly famous for his defeat of the dark wizard Grindelwald in 1945. For the discovery of the twelve uses of dragon's blood and his work on alchemy with his partner Nicholas Flannel, Professor Dumbledore enjoys chamber music and tenpin bowling. Who doesn't enjoy tenpin bowling? Tenpin bowling's great. Anyway, back to the main objective. Finding this sloth brain. Uh, which is right there. It looks uh, to be about twice the size of a human brain, that. I had no idea Sloth had such big brains. Oh, why is it in a jar in the top right hand corner there? Anyway, now you've got to. Well, actually, you don't have to trudge all the way back to Hogwarts here. This is actually one occasion when it does it automatically for you. It's automatically sort of teleported back to Hogwarts. Kind of wish it did that a bit more, really. Let's throw some more of these things around because they're fun. Oh, hang about, what's this? I think it's a letter, isn't it? Let's just throw that puffer pod at it, just. For a laugh. Harry, meet me in the dungeon. Your friend, Hermione. Oh, is that it? Well, we're going to the dungeons anyway, so that was kind of pointless. Hey, we found the sloth brain. Let's get back to Hogwarts. Yeah, yeah, Ron, we were planning to do that anyway. The race from the house cup continues. Oh, really? I wouldn't call it much of a race. Ravenclaw. Have Ravenclaw got 70 points? I haven't seen like any of their students do anything. Hufflepuff. I've just spent all my time collecting all these points on my own. These, all these students that don't seem to do anything during the game seem to be able to collect a massive number of points themselves. Gryffindor. Well, anyway, we've got a decent total. I think we're in the lead, aren't we? Gryffindor are in the lead yes, we on are. house points. The race for the house cup is heating up. I'll heat you up in a minute. Oh, I need to stop saying that. That's so stupid, that thing.